Hi Sag, this is going to be your love and life message for mid-April. As always, keep in mind this is a general reading. It's not going to resonate with everyone that watches. Things could be opposite and roles could be reversed as well. You have to take it as it resonates. This could be about a romantic partnership, but keep an open mind. If it doesn't resonate for you with romance, don't turn it off so quick. Give it a listen because it might resonate about another type of relationship in another part of your life. If you're new, welcome to Samashan. Libra. My name is Carrie Lee. This is a channel dedicated just to Libra and Sagittarius. I get an unusual amount of downloads for those two zodiac signs, so I gave you guys your own channel. The link to my website for private readings and to check out my other offerings and services is down in the description below. And I am going to do an extended reading because I see a ray of hope here, but we'll see if that ray of light can uh, open up in the near future. So Sag, I think that you're dealing with a real stick in the mud right now. And I just want to impart upon you for the middle of the month, don't stop being you because <laughs> you look so wonderful right now. You just look like this happy ray of sunshine right now and you're truly in your Sagittarius energy. So don't let anybody wreck that for you. I can see that you have a person around you right now that is struggling to open up. They wanted me to start with the Arrows of Love Oracle deck. This is by Mystic Moon Oracles. I bought it on Etsy, but uh, you might be able to find it on Amazon now. This is usually a deck I use for singles. Uh, this may be a singles reading, but anyways, a lot of cards came out and I just wanted to take them all. Spirit said, take them all. Satin Sheets, The Real Deal and Partnership, but then Caged Heart, Party of One, Fool's Gold, Love Chords and Phantom Lover. Casual dating is at the bottom of the deck. I wanted to use a second Oracle deck as well, just to get a little bit more about maybe a situation you're in. They also asked me to use the Island Time Wellness deck. Seduction, attention, attraction, flirting, dating, hooking up, temptation. Sometimes it can mean a third party interference, but seduction and talking and uh, yeah, hoovering, texting, conversations, awaited messages arrive, then coffee cup, meeting, conversing, feeling friendship and fun. But then cassette came out, outdated thinking, conditioning, replaying events over and over again, and the runner. So, and then they run. You run, they run, someone runs. This could be describing the person coming towards you, but this could also be describing you. So stay open to that possibility. Sometimes it can be hard to feel called out, but some of you might need to hear this message for yourselves. Again, take it as it resonates. So what the Oracle messages are already telling us is there's this cycle that keeps playing out. It keeps like an outdated cassette tape. It keeps being played out over and over and over and over again where... You know, there's seduction immediately and then promises made like the real deal and then partnership. Like, so there's seduction. Someone seduces the other person. They make a promise like, oh, I'm the real deal and there is going to be a partnership. But then someone has like a really caged heart as well. I hate this card says caged heart and it says damaged. I don't think hearts get damaged. I mean, I, I think they do. They can get damaged, but they can also repair and heal. But someone keeps their heart in a cage and they're a party of one. And it's all just bullshit and fool's gold. And then the love chord, someone strikes a chord with the other person, but then it's all just a fantasy. And then there's seduction, talking, going out, but it's just like, going on and on and on. It's like, this is the cycle over and over that the runner and the chaser both get themselves into. You know, like there's these promises made and then someone likes to do a lot of messages, but then they're a phantom lover. Um, when I get love chords and phantom lover together with fool's gold and party of one, someone might be spending a lot of time living in a fantasy narrative confusing it with reality even. And they prefer to do that and they prefer the seduction and the promises, but because they have a caged heart, because someone has a caged heart and they run, they're just stuck in that pattern of seduce, talk, chat, text, 
get together here and there. And then it's like, it's like rinse, wash, repeat, Wh rinse, wash, repeat. I kind of get the sense that someone may have opened up initially and made some promises, but the truth is they were never going to deliver. So watch out being attracted to people that have the caged heart. Watch out for hearing the promises, but then they never deliver. That's a person that is being avoidant, or maybe they have a disorganized attachment style or an avoidant attachment style. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but it's like that's that's the pattern that just keeps being played out over and over again. And I see evidence of it here. I'm like, wow, Sagittarius looks lovely, but the person around you looks like they struggle to open up. The overall energy of this person is the moon. The way they feel is the eight of wands. They see you as the sun. And I'm like, okay, great. Someone wants you to maybe cheer them up or they see you as a cheerful, happy person. Sagittarians are typically cheerful, happy people. You don't have time to be in a bad mood. You're very go with the flow. You really are. Fire signs in general want to be passionate and happy and turned on and confident, right? So there you are, the sun. But then what you need to know are your advice is the seven of wands. Someone suddenly feels overwhelmed and threatened. And then the final outcome is the king of swords. So if you're dealing with an air sign masculine, they could be a Gemini, Libra or Aquarius person. I'm also hearing watch out for someone stingy. Watch out for someone that doesn't like to tip, that thinks things cost too much. They're always in a rush. Um, yeah, always in a rush. They're stingy with money and they're kind of like a party pooper and a naysayer. You could be dealing with a Pisces as well. We also have Leo here. We have a lot of Leo energy here too. Some of you are really throwing a lot of Leo energy, but I also have Virgo here. Yep, Aries energy here as well. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I got all the signs. You could be dealing with any one of those signs or those signs, those constellations are impacting everything. So someone is the moon. They could just be a Pisces, but look at the moon's face. It's like sad and confused and in a dark place. Clarifying this is the three of swords, the four of swords and the six of swords. So I'm reading this as their energy, but this could be your energy as well. It's someone's energy overall where it's just like a moody time and a difficult time. I think the last time I read for you, you guys were in this role. I think you were the ones that were crabby and like, I just need space. Like I need you to leave me alone. I'm seeing maybe some role reversal this week. So you and another person might take turns, like one of you is in a good mood and the other one's in a bad mood, and then one of you is in a bad mood and the other one's in a good mood. It's a weird thing that happens with couples or with people in relationships, but it might be, there might be some toggling back and forth and role switching. Like it's their turn to be in a bad mood this week. Like they're feeling pessimistic and heartbroken. They may also be a bit sick and under the weather. Someone might be worried about their health, but then they're moving on slowly. So someone's just working through something here. It's like, maybe they've been sick. Maybe they're not under the weather. Maybe they've been pessimistic. Maybe they've been moody. And they're just slowly moving on. You know, they're not in a rush, but maybe they just wanna take their time working through their feelings and recovering from something. So in this state of mind, in this state of being, whoever this is, Eight of Wands, that's my text message card. Um, it does technically mean rapid forward motion and rapid development, but for me, 2024, it means sending text messages or just messages, right? But I find it interesting what's underneath it. <laughs> Strength, that's Leo, the Three of Pentacles, and then the High Priestess. Look at how the person in the Three of Pentacles is noticing the High Priestess. But strength has its back turned, right? So here's how I'm interpreting this. I'm in a bad mood and I'm not in a good place. I feel like it's sort of beneath me to admit that I'm crabby and hurt and upset right now. And it takes me strength um, to reach out to you, Sagittarius. And I, I, I don't want to whine or complain too much. I, I, I don't want to really display any mood to you. I just sort of want you to get to pay attention, get you to pay attention to me. This person might send you like mopey texts. Like, I'm hanging in there. I'm doing okay. 
And honestly, I just I have to say it, it seems like someone here is really passive aggressively communicating because I always feel like the three of pentacles in this deck is a little passive aggressive. Like, like if you want someone's attention, put down your fucking pentacle, like put it down, step out of the doorway and walk over to Sagittarius and say, hey, how's it going? I need to talk. I'm in a really bad mood. Life kind of sucks right now. I'm trying to be strong, but it isn't easy. Maybe the two of you had a fight of some kind and now they kind of want to come back and see if maybe you'll talk to them again. And they're hoping that intuitively you'll pick up on that and that that will draw you towards them. I definitely see that you're, some of you are dealing with a person that it's not easy for them to admit their wrong strength or it's not easy for them to overcome something at this time. I feel like they want a little bit of attention and encouragement from you, but they don't want to admit it. They don't want to admit it. They're hoping that intuitively you'll pick up on it. Because look how strength is turned around like, yeah, I'm messaging you, but I don't really want to talk to you. But I did message you, but I don't have a lot to say. And I do want you to notice me, but... I don't want you to talk. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm feeling like is happening here. Like, into I, it's almost like this person wants you to read their mind. They want you to read their mind. Someone struggles to communicate clearly that they're how they're really feeling. So I feel like you're dealing with someone Sagittarius that wants you to know that they're in a bad place. And they kind of want you to cheer them up and pay the attention to them, but not really. <laughs> it's like they don't want to have to admit to any of that. I'm like, oh, this person has some intimacy issues, but yet they see you as the sun, right? They see you as the sun. La, my happy inner child is being worn on my sleeve. You look beautiful. That's so great. You're so cute, Sag. And clarifying, this is the Two of Cups, the Two of Wands, and the Page of Cups. Okay, so some of you, the Eight of Wands might be directed towards this person. Someone might send another person a message, like in, in a positive way. Like it could be in, you know, this the Eight of Wands could be towards them, where it's like, hey, I'm intuitively sensing that you're not doing so great. What can I say to cheer you up? How can I help put you on the right path? Now, this person may say to you, hey, you always cheer me up. I'll be honest. This is not easy for me to admit to you that like my life fucking sucks right now. I'm not happy. Whenever I talk to you, you always give me like this creative dynamic solution. You don't want to talk about the past. You like talking about the future. And I really like that. So like someone, they might be saying, hey, can you help cheer me up? Can you help put me on the right path? Two of Wands, Two of Cups, Page of Cups. Or, hey, can we introduce something positive here? Or you may be reaching out to them. This could be your little Page of Cups. Like, hey, how's it going? Because if this is how you're being seen, you're being seen as a really happy, optimistic, approachable person. I love that. If that's what's going down, again, don't stop being you. Like this person might be reaching out to you to be cheered up or maybe you're going to help cheer them up. It looks like you're giving them like really good advice. Like look for the path with the most growth potential. Let's have like a good heart to heart conversation about this. Like I'll counsel you. I'll coach you. I'll be kind to you. I care about you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you be vulnerable here. Like these two little pages of cups. Let's be vulnerable. Let's open up. Let's explore emotionally. Maybe this person's been going through a dark time and they're like, wow, Sagittarius is really this amazing person. Here's where it started to go south. I was like, how nice. Sag is so nice. That's so nice. Someone's cheering you up or you're cheering them up. You're cheering them up. You look amazing over here. Here's where the shit started to go down, you guys. The seven of wands. Whoa. Whoa. Someone suddenly feels threatened and backed into a corner. Someone doesn't like something or someone's trying to block something. This is either a blocking or I always call this card, get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn, hippie. Get out. <laughs> Someone's very territorial of their space. And clarifying this is the Page of Pentacles, the Knight of Cups and the Sun. Whoa. Okay. 
So first of all, you could have a choice between two people right now because I have a king of swords and a king of cups on the table. And here's the thing. Go for the happy, in touch with their emotions person, okay? Watch out for trying to heal and help and get the stick in the mud closed off person to open up. Like, that's a kind thing to do, but don't be, like, don't keep knocking on a door that won't open. But like, what I see here is someone saying, hey, we should go do this. Look what I found. We could go take this little class on Sunday and we can have brunch and it's so creative. Like Page of Pentacles and Knight of Cups, that's like a creative art project or like um, like wine and design or you go to those little classes in the park and they teach you how to play a game and maybe you meet a younger person and they're just so idealistic and happy and it's like so fun. This looks like somebody inviting something to an event or like cheering them up telling them really good news. It's These cards are all positive, like all of them. But someone doesn't like that. So I feel like whoever's like Donnie Darko right now is just not ready for Mr. Sunshine right now. Because <laughs> that's what this looks like to me. It's like, I'm like, what is happening here? This looks like, fuck you, how dare you try to cheer me up? Can't you see I'm a disaster? So watch out for toxic positivity. Like, don't be sad, don't be sad. Like, watch out for being, like, not honoring this person's feelings and thinking it's your job to cheer them up. Like, I would be careful for that this week. And also make it clear to other people, like... Look, your whole positivity, I'm sorry, let's let bygones be bygones thing, like this isn't good, this isn't gonna work for me. Like that could also be a truth that someone needs to hear. It's like, it's either someone is, it's either Donnie Darko isn't ready for Mr. Sunshine or, and you're Mr. Sunshine, or it's that someone doesn't wanna have positivity jammed down their throat right now. So be careful about like cheering people up before they're ready to, or people just doing that toxic positivity, toxic forgiveness thing. Like it is possible that someone is trying to sweep something under the rug with you and you're just not finished being upset about it yet. And you have every right to still be mad. Like you have to tell that person, I'm still mad because you might be dealing with someone who just like can't handle you being mad at them. They really can't, um, they can't handle you being mad at them. They want to just make everything all better all the time or yeah, it's one or it's like one or the other. There's going to, I'm, I'm giving you multiple interpretations because this is a general reading and I can't talk to each of you individually, but just watch out for like being a little too happy for someone right now. Like they're not going to like that. There could be someone involved here, someone else involved, some younger people involved, maybe even kids involved, and they don't want to deal with that. But I don't think that's it. I think someone's really, yeah, try, I feel like you're trying to cheer somebody up and invite them to do something nice and fun and help them get in touch with their idealism again and try new things and... But they're just not ready for that with that caged heart. They're doing it to themselves. Final outcome is the King of Swords. And clarifying the King of Swords is the Four of Pentacles, the Five of Swords, and the Nine of Cups. Okay, you may go out with a person this week or have some kind of an interaction where you're like, or where someone's like, this is too expensive. I'm not giving a good tip. You're the one that ordered all the drinks, not me. Someone might not want to split the bill in half or not want to pay what something is worth. I'm also hearing that like you have a lot of energy that looks like the nine of cups. Like you've got six cards over here in your overall energy that basically equate the nine of cups, which is live in the moment, be filled with gratitude. All we have is now, like all we have is now and let's be happy and like raise your glass like, cheers to you. Like, like you're happy. I feel like you're dealing with a person that's looking at your happiness and just fucking hates it. Like, they hate how happy you are. And you're like, I mean, 
I just really had to have all nine of those cocktails <laughs> because I can. Like, I'm happy. I want to have all the cocktails. And he might be like, this was too expensive. And you're just being indulgent. It's like this person's going to find a reason to complain no matter what. They really are. They're going to find a reason to complain no matter what. Yeah, here's the hermit again. And the fool, you're in the, wow, here's the king of swords again. King of swords, hermit, king of pentacles. These could be people from your past. Look at how the fool is looking back at the king of swords, like, follow me, let's go have fun. And this guy is like, you're, you're a dipshit. Like, there's a person here that has no respect for Aries energy and Aries is in the North Node and Chiron right now. So we really need to get in touch with recapturing innocence and the right to, to let our inner child shine and the right to be innocent and the right to feel newness and the right to be a little foolish and the you like you have the right to be a happy little dingling right now and like leave bullshit behind and someone else is like no like you can't just move on, you can't be happy. We have to stay here and be angry. I mean, I'm an air sign. I love the King of Swords. This is Libra energy, but this is the most pissed off looking King of Swords I ever did see. He looks ticked. Like how dare you walk through life happy? And it's all, I usually love the hermit, like I love the hermit, but it's almost like this person, I don't believe this in real life, but like, I don't believe this is possible, but it's almost like this person has like some dark entity, like stay sad, stay sad and withdrawn. Like, don't be happy. Just stay in the, in the shadows, stay in the darkness and sort of wants to control happiness when it sees it. That's a person that happiness doesn't feel safe to them. They're hyper vigilant about their caged heart. They're hyper vigilant about it. And it's them. It's not you. Because here's the energy of the person around you overall. The way they see themselves is the emperor. Okay, very similar to the king of swords. Um, maybe this guy, maybe this king of swords has to talk to the emperor. And that's going to be a problem. There could be several people involved here. But this person sees themselves as the emperor, logical, structured, practical, in charge. He can be a little stuffy. The emperor has a big job. He's the king of all kings. He can, it's, it's a struggle to open up sometimes when you're the in the Aryan energy of the emperor where like you have to be in charge and sometimes you have to push emotion aside and be the king of swords sometimes. But um, they're just, they also like, they want to be in control and the way they feel is the eight of swords like they're all trapped in their head there's things that they refuse to see they refuse to see certain things and they certainly refuse to see the solutions they'd rather overthink the shit out of it i honestly think that the eight of swords is like a giant defense mechanism sometimes not all the time but sometimes that's how Carl Jung saw it too. It's like, this is a mental defense mechanism. It's not solution focused. And they're in their head about it. But the two of cups, it's like they know they can talk to you, but they're really in their head about it. There could be an Aries here or a person in charge. I was like, what is the eight of swords? Like, what are they? I mean, I love the emperor and I love the two of cups, but what's that about? Where's the anxiety and the inability to find a solution? Like, what are they really all trapped in their head about? I, sh I cannot make this shit up. I was like, holy shit, I knew it. The sun, the king of cups, and the queen of wands. Okay, that's you, I think. So one of two things is happening here. But what I the, the main thing I think is happening is this person really wants to be a closed off, curmudgeonous asshole stick in the mud that like won't open up. He's like stiff, like so uptight, just so closed off and so caged and so uptight. And like, just leave me alone in my misery, but let me reach out to you just to get a little bit of attention. But oh my God, don't make me talk to you. Like, don't fuck up my misery. 
It's like it does. This person does not want you to. I don't mean to laugh at them, but I'm like, I, I'm laughing because I used to be this way. Like, I kid you not, you guys, I was this asshole for like a decade. Like, I'm miserable. I'm bitter. I'm upset. And don't you dare try to cheer me up. Like, I get it, dude. But Sagittarius like really melts your heart. Like, look at how the ice melts when he looks at you. The ice melts. Oh my gosh, look at how the King of Cups here is looking at you, the Queen of Wands and the Sun. He can't help but be happy. He can't help but feel optimism. You are the Sun. Oh my God, you're a fire sign. You're warm like the Sun. And also, I think that th this person, what's underneath here that they struggle to see is how good you make them feel. Like he puts down that sword and he lets go of his scepter and he lets go of his emperor title and he turns into this giant teddy bear that's all mushy and squishy and happy the minute he looks at you. And I also think he likes it when you are cheered up and delighted by him. Yeah. Someone here might be very all or nothing where it's like they have they have two speeds, asleep and Metallica. Like they don't have anything in between. They're they they may run hot and cold. Now you guys are familiar with this. You guys sometimes run hot and cold while you're trying to figure something out. Like you're hot, you're cold, you're hot, you're cold and you do the alchemy, right? The temperance does. You do the alchemy of your emotion and your passion and then you find your emotional sweet spot. Like, I know you guys get hot and cold, but I feel like this is even too much for you because like what this person refuses to do is admit to themselves and admit to you that you melt their frozen heart. You thaw it out. They can't help it. And this person does not want to be happy. Like they don't. They may say that you're too much. They may say that you're too happy. I also get the sense that there might be multiple people here. The Leo or the water sign is the guy. He's the one. I just love water signs. And like a Cancer Leo cusp. Oh my God. They're so great. They would be, that would be a good match for you. A Leo Cancer cusp. That's what it looks like. It's like, they they don't want to admit to themselves how happy you make them and and it's almost that's why they're in their head about it and i was like wow that is such a fucking bummer <laughs> and it is coming towards you this is coming towards you because here's your energy you're the nine of pentacles the four of wands and the knight of cups okay you could be like talking to a younger water sign Maybe that could be a friend, a family member, a child, a coworker, someone you're dating, whatever. This guy's a jerk. You like the watery person. Other people might be voicing their opinion about who you spend time with and it's none of their business. You need to tell them to stay in their lane. But like you're all about like creativity, romance, idealism. This is like Come over to my place. Let's let's hang out in the backyard. Do, stop and smell the roses. Like you're stopping and smelling the roses. You feel yourself out in nature. You're like, oh, the sun is so warm. I look so good in this outfit. I'm doing really well. I have all this stability. Like I'm so happy. I think you're very grounded and in touch with nature. I see you guys spending a lot of time outdoors, eating in outdoor cafes, walking in gardens, quite literally like you're literally hosting the backyard tea parties this week and all through the middle of April and really wearing your heart on your sleeve. You're writing the whole world a romance novel right now. Sometimes the Knight of Cups can be a little immature and idealistic. That's true. But like, why would you ever stop wanting to be Romeo and Juliet or like Don Quixote? <laughs> like you, like it's beautiful, it's creative, it's artistic, it's romantic, it is idealism. It's like, I don't know, what, uh, 
I don't know where Neptune is in your guys chart right now, but like it's all dreamy and happy and creative energy coming out of you. That looks so sweet. And I was like, Oh, what are you doing? What are you pouring into creatively? And I have the page of wands, the three of pentacles and the three of cups. I was like, Oh, my God. Sagittarius, do not ever stop being you. This is so Sagittarius. It's so Sagittarius. Look at her. She's like, I'm over here by myself and my neighbor's like, hey, come over here, smell my flowers. And you're like, okay. And then you go over and then you're like, wow, we can make a really beautiful bouquet with this. And then it's like, wait, let's go just walking around town tonight. There's so many things to explore. I'm really looking for something exciting. I'm just going to sample life. Oh, look at this. Check it, this out. Oh, wow. Look at these people. That is, oh my God. Yes. You're so cute. This is so <laughs> Sagittarius. Like, this is what it means to be a Sagittarius. These cards, this is everything it means to be a Sag. Let's explore new things. Let's see what kind of shenanigans we can get into. Let's check out these different groups of people. Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Some of you might go to like a... Um, Oh, like a yard sale this week or like a flea market or a place where different vendors set up and you try this and you try that. Like you try this person's soap, you try this person's tea, you get this, you get that. Like that is something that a Sagittarius would do. Y'all would do that every day for the rest of your lives in between learning philosophy and traveling, right? And getting laid. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's like, that's all you. And I'm like, wow. It's you that's so happy right now. You're in such a good energy, but you're dealing with a person, Sagittarius, that's just underneath, you warm their heart, you melt their heart. But what they would rather do is serial dating, casual dating, where they never let anybody get close, where they make these big promises, you start to fantasize about them. And it's a good thing you're fantasizing about them because they're ghosting you in real life anyways. All you have are your freaking fantasies when people ghost you. And it's like they hide in their pain. And I don't mean to delegitimize this pain. I don't. But I really feel like you're dealing with someone that is afraid to be happy. Happiness and safety like doesn't feel safe to them. Y'all are over here in thrive energy. You're thriving. You're nurtured. You're attuned. You're curious. You're excited. You're open. I think you're the fool. I am the fool. And this person's like, how dare you? Like, they're just afraid of it. They're afraid. I am going to do an extended because there's hope here. I'm like, See, this person doesn't want the sunshine shining on them, but deep down they do. And I do think that we can get this person to open up. Like, I think you can get this person to open up. Maybe we'll see. But if you don't feel like you need the extended, here's your advice about this scenario for the rest of the week. I am enough. You are enough right now. This may or may not apply to this message, but spirit wants you to know right now who you are all by yourself is enough. Also, saying how you feel doesn't mean you are asking or doing too much. You're not asking too much of a person or doing too much when you express your emotions. Like, allow your emotions to take up space in the room. Don't be afraid to take up emotional space. You don't want to take up all of the emotional space in the room, but you do have the right to take up space, okay? So you deserve how to say how you really feel. That's not asking too much. Also, I love this, the crown. The crown is on. I am shifting from a survival mindset to a thriving mindset. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. You are shifting into thrive. This person is in survive, okay? They're in survival energy, but you're in thrive energy. There's a time and a place for each, but stay in your thrive energy. And if this person feels like they can't express themselves towards you, then they need to find someone else to commiserate with a little bit. But you are enough. You're not taking up too much space by saying how you feel. And you're starting to shift into a thrive mindset. You need to keep going. So that is your message for the week, Sag. Just watch out for the Donnie Darkos. Stay in Mr. Sunshine energy. If you feel like that you need the extended to see how long 
it will take for this person to thaw. The link to that will be at the top of the description below. That's your very interesting message for this week, Sagittarius. I hope it resonates and I hope it helps. I'm always listening to the universe for you. Take care. I love you, Sag. Bye.